Nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, also known as SSBNs or simply boomers, play a vital role in safeguarding a nation's nuclear deterrent capabilities. Their primary function is to clandestinely carry and launch nuclear missiles from beneath the ocean's surface, offering a secure and stealthy platform. Unlike other naval vessels, SSBNs are not intended for engaging in direct combat with enemy ships. Instead, they serve to ensure the survivability of a nation's nuclear arsenal, particularly in scenarios where ground-based missile systems may be at risk. However, SSBNs are versatile platforms, capable of performing various tasks if needed, which we'll explore later in this video. While many countries are expanding their submarine fleets, only a handful, precisely six, operate nuclear-powered submarines due to the significant costs involved. These countries include the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, China and India, all of which have officially confirmed their possession of nuclear-powered submarines. It's important to note that within the category of nuclear propulsion submarines, there exists another type known as nuclear attack submarines or SSNs. Unlike SSBNs, SSNs are designed for engaging and neutralizing enemy surface ships and submarines. India, for instance, does not currently operate a nuclear attack submarine. However, it had leased two Russian nuclear attack submarines. One in 1987, which was returned in 1991, and the second one, INS Chakra, in 2012. INS Chakra was returned to Russia in 2021, 10 months prior to the end of its lease, due to being involved in an accident that damaged its hull. But in today's video, we will talk about India's indigenously built SSBNs, and see what they can do. Before we get into what India's nuclear-powered submarines can do, it's crucial to understand that a lot of what we know is based on guesses, since these military assets are highly classified. So to begin with, India currently has two SSBNs, while the newer one is currently in sea trial, and is expected to be inducted within this year. India's submarine projects are shrouded in secrecy, evident when its second SSBN was launched without any high-profile ceremonies. These vessels were developed under the Advanced Technology Vessel Program, with the first submarine, INS Arahant, codename S2, launched in 2009 and inducted into service in 2016 after rigorous sea trials. The second, INS Aragat, codename S3, an upgraded variant of the Arahant-class submarine, was quietly launched in 2017 with minimal public announcements regarding its capabilities and current status. Both SSBNs feature seven-blade propellers, powered by pressurized water reactors of 83 megawatts. They also boast four launch tubes capable of carrying up to 12 short-range K-15 Sagarika missiles and four long-range K-4 missiles. However, future variants, such as the S-4 and S-5, will have eight launch tubes and a higher displacement, approximately 1,000 tons more than the Arihant class. India aims to have a total of six SSBNs, with four being Arihant class and two belonging to the S4 and S5 variants. India has been eyeing a nuclear-powered submarine for a while now. They kicked off a project back in the 1980s called the ATV. The project initially aimed to develop nuclear-powered fast attack submarines. However, after India's nuclear tests in 1998, the focus shifted to building a ballistic missile submarine to complete India's nuclear triad. This required lengthening the hull design and transforming the submarine from an SSN to an SSBN. However, building a nuclear submarine came with hefty challenges. So India opted to acquire the design from an international agency rather than starting from scratch. Russia stepped in with the design when no other country was willing to do so, although India did pay a substantial fee for it. This decision enabled India to tailor the design to fit its requirements and implement updates as needed. One unique aspect of the project was the involvement of the private sector. While only one company served as the primary builder, around 100 other vendors collaborated on the project. The Baba Atomic Research Center, India's premier nuclear research facility, developed multiple light water reactor designs suitable for nuclear marine propulsion, these designs, starting with the CLWRB-1 for the Arihant-class submarine, provided valuable experience for the development of larger reactors like the IPWR-900, 
which can be miniaturized for naval applications. In terms of weapon systems, DRDO scientists collaborated with the Navy to develop suitable systems. Beyond their role in strategic deterrence and first and second strike capabilities, SSBNs offer a range of additional advantages including stealth, survivability, and virtually unlimited range, with the exception of food supplies. However, it's important to note that the core of the Arihant submarines is not designed for the vessel's entire lifespan and will require refueling. These SSBNs possess the capability to perform various tasks if necessary. INS Arihant and INS Arihat are primarily equipped for strategic deterrence, boasting sophisticated sensor suites. Moreover, they are armed with torpedo tubes, enabling them to engage in anti-ship and anti-submarine warfare, particularly if they encounter hostile surface vessels or submarines during their patrols. Furthermore, SSBNs can act as communication relays in regions where terrestrial or satellite-based communication systems are unavailable or disrupted, utilizing very low-frequency VLF or extremely low-frequency ELF radio waves these submarines can establish communication with other submarines, surface vessels, or command centers. However, it's important to acknowledge that their communication capabilities are limited in terms of range and bandwidth compared to terrestrial or satellite-based systems. Submarines may need to periodically surface or deploy communication buoys to maintain connectivity. Additionally, SSBNs can serve as platforms for intelligence gathering and reconnaissance. Their ability to operate covertly in foreign waters allows them to monitor maritime activities, gather electronic intelligence, and track the movements of potential adversaries' naval forces. This intelligence is invaluable for enhancing situational awareness and strategic planning. While researching this topic, I read several articles claiming that Indian and Chinese SSBNs are very noisy. However, these articles didn't offer specific evidence to back up their claims about the noise levels of Indian SSBNs. Instead, they talked more generally about the challenges both countries face in building reliable sea-based nuclear deterrents. Since there's no public information available to support these claims, they're really just guesses. While it's possible that India's nuclear submarine program hasn't reached full maturity yet, there might be noise issues that will be addressed as more submarines of this type are introduced. While nuclear submarines are generally noisier compared to diesel submarines, but that doesn't mean they're all very noisy. Some experts say that America's current nuclear submarines are quieter in general. Early US and Russian nuclear subs did have noise problems, but they've improved over time with better technology. But remember, finding a submarine isn't just about noise. The ocean's huge and SSBNs operate deep underwater, can strike from a long distance, and finding subs that don't want to be found is not easy. Nuclear submarines employ various methods to remain undetected. SSBNs, in particular, utilize several strategies to reduce their acoustic signature, including operating at slower speeds and employing quieting technologies to minimize noise from propulsion systems and machinery. These tactics make them less detectable to enemy anti-submarine warfare assets. Moreover, SSBNs capitalize on natural underwater features like undersea terrain to mask their acoustic signature, making it challenging for enemy ASW assets to detect them. The thermal layer, also known as the thermocline, is a region within the ocean where there's a significant change in temperature over a relatively short distance. Submarines use this layer to their advantage for hiding from detection, because it can affect the propagation of sound waves, making it harder for sonar systems to detect them. They can also deploy counter-detection measures, such as decoys, towed arrays, and electronic warfare systems to confuse or evade enemy sensors and detection systems. Nonetheless, detection by other submarines remains possible. This is because some submarines are designed with sophisticated sonar systems for detecting other submarines, and they often engage in cat and mouse games of evasion and detection. And there was an incident back in 2015 during a trilateral exercise involving India, Japan, and the United States. A Soviet-era Kilo-class diesel-electric submarine, upgraded with modern Indian sonar, detected a Los Angeles-class nuclear fast-attack submarine. It identified the submarine by listening to the hydrophonic effect, locking onto it thereafter. This incident vividly demonstrates the potency of upgraded diesel-electric submarines adding a significant dimension to naval warfare. 
often described as a hole in the water, diesel electric submarines present a formidable challenge, even for the US Navy. Their silent running on electrical power while submerged is a vexing issue. However, it's worth noting that the newer Virginia-class SSNs outperform their Los Angeles-class predecessors in terms of quietness, 